They call it the Acer Predator Triton 300 SC. One of my favorite things about this laptop is that it totes a i9-12900H and RTX 3060, and it is so thin and light, as you can see coming up on the screen. Now, this is a competitor, I would say, of the Asus Zephyrus G14. I'm gonna do a whole dedicated head-to-head -head review video of that, so you can check out the performance differences between those two laptops. But I would say that the advantage of this one is it's slightly thinner and slightly lighter. It also has better thermals. So as you can see, the thermal results coming up on the screen, it does not get above 80 degrees Celsius on the 4K export. Basically what I do is I take a nine minute 4K clip, put that into Premiere Pro and export it out at full quality YouTube settings. It pushes the CPU and GPU quite hard. And as you can see, it stayed below 80 degrees Celsius. So fantastic results for this laptop. It's not gonna get too hot. So it'll make for a great on the go laptop. Now keep in mind that the screen is a 14 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen. I think that's a great size for an on the go friendly laptop. However, for me personally, if I was gonna use this as my daily driver, I would get a secondary external monitor in order to give me more screen real estate. That'll just provide a better workflow and user experience for you if this is your dedicated workhorse. The 14 inch screen is good, it just, you get more out of that extra screen real estate, of course, and so that is what I would do personally. Now this is a beautiful panel, it's an OLED display, so it's gonna be color accurate and have great color gamut range, whether you're a graphic designer, video editor, photographer, or digital artist. You'll be able to do really great color grading or photo editing on this screen, and it'll have great, very accurate color reproduction. Speaking of the on-the-go friendliness of this laptop, let's talk about battery life. You can get about seven hours and six minutes for productivity workflows, about six hours for streaming video playback, about three hours of like graphic design, photo editing, digital artwork, and that's in the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat until the battery goes dead. And then for playback for video editing, if you're doing 4K video editing playback in Premiere Pro, it gets about two hours and 42 minutes. So battery life isn't this laptop specialty, it's more thin and light performance. Now jumping into the interior of the laptop, the keyboard is nicely laid out with no numpads, nice consolidated keyboard. You have all your full size arrow keys, however you don't have a full size shift key. Personally, I don't love that, but it does allow them to create a smaller keyboard without compromising on the other size of the keys. Now you can quickly access your Predator Helios command center to change your fan modes with a click of a button right there from your keyboard deck. So you can jump through different fan modes if you wanna be quiet, default, extreme, or turbo. Now keep in mind that while using this laptop on the battery, so when you're not plugged into the charger, you'll only have access to default mode. And personally, that's what I think has led to a less than awesome uh, battery life. If I could go to quiet mode, it would allow the components to not be used so heavily. It would give you slightly less performance, but it would allow your battery to last longer. So that would be one negative aspect of the Predator Scent Center that I wish maybe Acer would update in the future and that would provide you better battery life. Now you can come in here to fan control and you can go custom and you can turn the fans down and that may provide you a little bit more battery life while using your laptop. So just a little tip there, maybe that'll help you out. I'm freaking stoked about the Patreon that we're about to launch, absolutely. We're launching a freaking Patreon and you should join because it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna have never before seen content on the channel. Patreon, not channel, channel's YouTube. So why is this content not being posted to YouTube? Well, the answer is really simple. I know that there is a tight group of loyal followers that follow my content and I wanna reward and be a part of the tight, loyal community that we have been building here as we've been reaching 85,000 subscribers. And I wanna go deeper with you guys. I wanna do live Q and A's. I wanna get face to face with you and chat in a live video call with my most faithful subscribers. I wanna repurpose that content and put it on my channel so you can then be featured in my channel with me. I want to do exclusive giveaways that I can't just launch to the masses of communities. There's sometimes I get to keep laptops, but I don't need them. And so it's a place for me to basically just give back to my most loyal community followers. Now, one thing I wish they did provide for us is a larger trackpad. Now I do review computers for creative professionals. So that's why this opinion comes out right here. As a creator, having a larger trackpad just helps with on-the-go workflows. Having a larger trackpad just allows you to really manage your apps and create more effectively. So if the keyboard could have been pushed up a little bit, that would have been more preferable for me personally. Now, here's a quick audio sample of me using the keyboard and the trackpad so you can hear what that sounds like for yourself.
And if you didn't get a chance to check out my unboxing, here's a quick sample of the webcam on the Triton 300. This is the webcam on the Acer Triton 300 SE 14 inch model and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Also, if you're using the speakers to edit video or listen to music, here's a quick sample to hear what the speakers sound like. One extremely important aspect of this review is definitely hitting that subscribe button to help us reach 100,000 subscribers by Christmas. We would greatly appreciate it here on this channel, myself and everybody who's involved with making this channel happen. So take one second, tap that subscribe button and help us reach 100,000 by Christmas. Thank you so much. Without further ado, let's jump into the performance benchmarks, looking at Geekbench single core and multi-core, as well as Cinebench R23 single core and multi-core. You see this laptop has no problems topping the charts in those simulated benchmarks. Even as we move on to Cinebench R20, it's still in the top few spots on that benchmark test. But in my opinion, life is not made up of simulated benchmarks, so let's get into the real world test. As we look at Blender, you might expect this laptop to do better in Blender because it did so well in the simulated benchmarks. However, this laptop only comes equipped with the RTX 3060, but Blender prefers a more powerful GPU to complement a powerful CPU. So perhaps if this laptop would have came with an RTX 3070 or 3070 Ti, we would have seen a much higher score here in Blender. So just keep that in mind. Maybe an i7-12700H, an RTX 3070 Ti equipped laptop, if you're gonna be a Blender user, might be a better choice for you than the i9 with a 3060. So just keep that in mind. However, as you move on to Autodesk 3DS Max, you can see this laptop has solid performance inside of Autodesk, scoring a 182. And one of the more powerful laptops I've seen on the channel is the M16 inside of Autodesk 3DS Max, scoring a 214. So you actually only have about a 30 point difference there between the two. But again, if you see that M16 has the 3070 Ti, giving it a little bit more juice in performance. Now moving on to Autodesk Maya, again, kind of the same position here on the benchmark chart, mid to lower end, but still a great score nonetheless. Don't think just because it's on the lower end of this chart, uh, it's not good. All of these laptops on this chart perform very well. Now moving on to PTC Creo, you can see again, very similar position, scoring a 174 uh, against one of the top performers on this chart, which is a 210 from the Lenovo Legion Slim 7. Now moving on to SolidWorks, because this comes equipped with an RTX 30. 60 that is a gaming GPU, not a, you know, A2000 or A3000, which is actually a workstation GPU. This does not perform as well as one might hope inside of SolidWorks. If I were you and you're a big SolidWorks user, I would either go with a Radeon RX GPU, like it is found in the Legion Slim 7 or the Asus Zephyrus G14, or I would find something like an A2000 or A3000 workstation GPU. If you're a big SolidWorks user, that'd be my top recommendation for you. Now moving on to Photoshop, with this i9-12900H, it has no issues inside of Photoshop, scoring one of the top scores I've seen on my channel in quite a while. And moving on to After Effects, same thing, we see a top score there with a 925. This is a fantastic laptop for Photoshop and After Effects as well. Now getting into the video editing benchmarks, this laptop has no problem with 4K or 6K B-RAW or 6K RED footage in regards to playback. Now, as you can see in red footage playback, it's about 5,000 drop frames. I prefer to see these, you know, in the 3,000 range, if I'm gonna say like, yeah, definitely an awesome red footage laptop. Um, red footage is not the most popular footage for most users, so, but I just put that test in there so you can see how well this laptop can handle the stress test of red footage. So if you're doing B-RAW or 4K, you're gonna have no issues with this laptop. Now moving on to the export times with the 4K nine minute export out of Premiere Pro, you can see a nice middle of the charts, a two minute and 54 second export time. That is great, definitely hitting the standard here for that export time. 
Looking at the 6K B-Raw export, one of the best I have seen on my channel, a 14 minute and 57 second export. So this laptop will handle video editing very well. And as we're looking at DaVinci Resolve, you can see five minutes and 43 seconds, nailing the third spot in the DaVinci Resolve export time result. This laptop cools very well, has excellent thermals, has great color gamut range, color accuracy, has good battery life and great performance for creators. So punch for punch, this would be a great on the go friendly laptop that I would definitely consider picking up if that is your use case. Now don't forget to subscribe so you can help us reach 100,000 subscribers by Christmas. I'd be so grateful if you would do that for us. It'd be very, very awesome. Links in the description if you wanna make a purchase or check the live pricing of this laptop. And of course likes, this video brought you some value, but really more than anything, if this video brought you value, subscribe. So that'll help us reach 100,000 by Christmas. I'll see you in the next one.